Uh, hello folks, Kevin here again. Today I am in the Kurianaraka National Park. It's a very large, flat and mostly marshy or swampy area that's very popular with tourists for doing day hikes and also longer hikes. My plan is to hike into where there's a designated campfire spot at about five kilometers, set up for the night in a hammock and I'll be trying my new Lesovic Draka hammock and then hike back out along the same route uh, tomorrow morning. I wasn't sure whether to wear snowshoes but it seems that so far at least uh, the trail is beaten down and uh, there's only a few centimeters of snow so it's fairly easy to walk although the trail itself is quite narrow. Anyway let's see how we get on. I've been following some tracks that may or may not be wolf. I thought it's possible it's just a dog, but uh, A, they're rather large, and B, there aren't any human footprints accompanying them. There are wolves in this part of southern Finland, but uh, they're very spread out. Compared to my last overnight camp, which had temperatures down into the high teens, almost minus 20. Currently, the weather is about minus one, sunny, clear blue sky, and uh, yeah, relative to, relative to last week, it's almost balmy. I haven't got much on, and not even gloves on, and I'm not cold. Wonderful. Doesn't get better than this. Okay, so we've come out of the pine forest. Now we're in an area of spruce. And, uh, compared to the pine wood, it's quite dim in here. Here, but I think it's, this is only a stand of trees, so we should be back out into the pine stretch very soon. Okay, so I made it to Takanitun Vore fireplace, fire pit, and uh, yeah, it's just that, a fire pit with some benches around it. There's a sign saying that there's wood available, but it's 100 meters away further. First order of business is to set up the hammock, and then I'm going to put the trenji on, make a hot drink and have a small snack, and then I'll go and get some wood and make a small fire. I've finally gone over to the dark side and started to use the original alcohol Trangia. I like the quiet, I have to say, although I don't like the black that it produces on the on the on the pots. Another thing I don't like is, is if the flame is too high, it comes around the pot and melts the insulation on the handles. Um, that's not very good either. But I guess I, with anything, there's pros and cons. So, this evening we have Knorr Spaghetteria Spinacci with cheese and spinach. So it should be ready in 10 minutes. And I'm going to add the bacon that I fried to this. It would be actually quite good with the bacon in the middle of it. Well, I guess the proof is in the pudding. We shall see. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough alcohol for the burner to cook my breakfast tomorrow. So I thought I'd use this pot over the fire. It's got the nice heat exchanger in so that I can make a hot drink and also boil water to put in my um, bottle for a hot water bottle in my sleeping bag.
Good morning folks. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of breakfast. I've got porridge and I've got some fried rashers or bacon. I'm gonna wash it down with some nice coffee that I did in a filter. I slept quite well. It uh, wasn't cold at all. In fact, I had to take some clothes off at some stage because I was too warm. So uh, I'm very happy with that. The highlight of the night was that around half past 11 last night, there were wolves howling. It's the first time I've ever heard wolves howling in the wild. And uh, I have to admit, it scared me. Um, it makes the hair stand on the back of your neck. And I started to wonder if my hammock setup would give me any sort of protection if I was surrounded by a pack of wolves. Probably not. But of course, then I re remembered that uh, wolves very, very rarely attack people in Finland. And so I was probably quite safe. I'm going to get some breakfast in and then I'll come back and give you the grand tour of my hammock setup. So here we have my palace for the night. It is a DD Hammocks XL super light tarp, which measures 4.5 meters by 2.9 meters. And um, as you can see, it has this sort of boat shape. Uh, I practice using this actually on the ground in one of my previous videos. The doors close very nicely, actually. There's only a very slight gap left. And um, yeah, it's uh, quite effective at closing off the area you can also see I use my trekking pole again as a lifter bar and I use these uh, contact lens containers as contact points to uh, lift the tarp at the sides. Okay, let's go inside. So there is the Lesovic Draka tent. It was very comfortable actually. I noticed the extra length was rather nice in terms of being able to stretch out and with no real noticeable calf ridge. You can see, for example, how far away the hammock is actually from the sides. You don't have to worry about the tarp pressing up against you during the night, which is quite nice. That's the back of the contact lens container that's uh, gently screwed against the front cap. And that's the contact point for the lifter bar. Seems to work pretty well. If I turn around then, that's the view towards the door. One modification that I added for the doors, I saw it on YouTube, it's not my modification, was to add bungee cord or shock cord to the edge of the tarp and then to add a small little clip like that. Um, I have to admit they maybe are a little bit small with cold hands, they're a little bit difficult to operate. This clips into a corresponding clip, which I've used some nylon string to attach the, to the loop on the opposite side. It simply clips in like that. And then I do the same on the other side. And this, uh, yeah, gives me this boat formation with these nice closed doors. This allows the doors to overlap quite nicely. One extra bonus of this clip system is that the front doors and the back doors can be attached to each other. Say if you want to open out your tarp uh, for maximum view outside. So rather than having them flapping down, they can be attached like so. And then the front and back doors can be folded back out of the way quite neatly. So I hope you'll forgive my rather MacGyverish looking attempts with knots here. I'm going to order some more two millimeter or two and a half millimeter shock cord and uh, redo this so that it looks a lot neater. So uh, this is just a just a test. So last night for insulation we had the DD hammocks under blanket on the outside and then inside that as before we have a Bushman Glow minus 12 rated. Um, the DD Hammocks is a synthetic fill. The Glow is uh, down. Then inside the hammock I have a quarter inch foam mat which I laid, laid on. And then to keep me warm the good old Thermarest Polar Ranger. 
and uh, yeah, it certainly did its job because as I said, I had to open the zips to vent quite a bit. One definite plus is the gear organizer. I keep my phone in there, my glasses, my toiletries, and then it was easy to get stuff in and out. And then when I didn't want it anymore, I could just basically tuck it away and it stayed away from dangling in my face. One little extra mod I did last night was I wanted to see if I could get extra heat saved inside the hammock by using one of these cheap 20 euro uh, emergency blankets. They're a bit more durable than the Mylar ones. In fact, it was a bit redundant because of the sleeping bag kept me so warm. There were some, a bit of frost on it this morning, but not too much. And the mosquito net actually kept that off my face. So I would say it actually worked quite well. So uh, yeah, all in all, I'm very happy with my Lesovic Draka. One thing I didn't do last night was to use the uh, side pullouts and actually space the, the hammock out using the uh, bungee cords. Um, I'm not sure if it actually needed it or not because I had loads of space in the hammock itself. So we're on the way again. There were some people came to light a fire and make some hot food, for grilled sausages, etc. So I didn't want to film all the way they were there and disturb them. The people were locals and they said that there is a wolf pack around here of about 10 individuals. But uh, he said that I was very lucky to hear them howling. And uh, he asked if I'd seen any and I said no. And he said that uh, in all the years he's been living around here, he's only seen wolves on two occasions, and that from a distance. This place is amazingly beautiful, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely be coming again. I think I'll finish up here right now. So uh, thank you for joining me on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, this is Kevin, signing off. All the best. Moi moi.